And we're live, Hi everyone, this is Amtgamer, and I'll be returning to Civ 5 Fox Populi. Has been a long time, I, I took a break, I'm not ashamed to say it, I needed a break, and now I'm back to modding, and going to take things in a slightly different direction, but we'll hopefully slowly incorporate all of the ideas I've had before my past mods into this so let's see what I'm doing differently so before I just have this big massive mod that where I tried to add everything it kind of worked it kind of didn't especially with Vox Populi changing pretty drastically from version to version honestly is just not realistic and just managing something so big is difficult, so I have decided to take on a more modular approach. So I will make a foundation mod, which will, I will talk about, introduce in this video, and then eventually I will make other modular mod mods that will work with this foundation mod. So the foundation mod is called AG's yield reduction mod it's I'm not pronouncing it properly AG yield reduction mod and it's just as the name suggests the goal is to cut down on yields because at least for me personally I feel like there's just way way too much yield bloat and I want to tackle it. Now people not might not agree with me, but that's fine. It's it's something that has bothered me for a long time. It's because if the way I see it, it just gets worse. Because what happens is you have Various things early on that give a lot of yields. Now to make things that come later more worthwhile, you get even more yields. And then now your late game, buildings, ideologies, improvements, all of those have to give crazy amounts of yields to justify it. So the purpose of the AG Yields Reduction Mod or AGYRM is to cut down all sources. Nothing is going to be spared. And I think the, I mean, one thing you'll probably notice at the start is the yields from terrain. That's one of the first thing I tackled. Plain, grassland, one food, forest gives plus one production, lake, lake gives plus one food. Basically, it's actually easier to showcase here, but the idea is that every single terrain, not desert, desert never had yields to begin with. They're actually great when it comes to reduction because zero divided by whatever is going to be zero. So overall, like yields for everything has been reduced, even like atolls, even the natural wonders. Not only their base yield, but also the yields they gain uh, every era. Lakes are not as strong. This is just uh, displayed. This is a really weird thing. I never quite figured out. Oasis doesn't give crazy amounts of gold. So that's one of the first thing. And next, of course, resources. Now, not only are the base yields lower, but also improvements tend to only boost it slightly. Uh, we'll talk more about uh, building and their impact on uh, resources because I haven't gotten there yet. So basically, I've worked on terrain, uh, resources. This improvement is a good idea. Uh, civilizations. Everything got cut down, some of them got reworked because, I mean, that's the main thing, right? Once, once you have, let's say, one unique ability, 
that gives a ton of yields. Now, every single other unique ability have to rival that. Either they give similar amounts or they have to be really good, like extremely powerful. And that's what I was seeing. It, it becomes kind of an arms race where you got to make sure that there isn't any yield creep for any of the buildings or improvements. Because once you improve one thing, suddenly something else become inadequate and you begin to add yields to that other thing. And then, you know, it's a never ending cycle. So my hope is to cut it down to the point where it's really simple and I want to keep it simple. Because not only does it make it a bit easier to balance, but it also helps if you want diversity, if you want to add new mechanics. Because now your new mechanics don't have to give crazy amounts of yields. Because, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of, you get a lot of yields. So like some of the unique ability give lots of yields. Uh, terrain can give terrain and resources is another big source. Uh, next you have your pantheons. Before ancestor worship gave what one faith every four or five followers and two faith and two culture from councils. And then you start seeing like all of these pantheons giving multiple things. It does A and does B and does C and that's the only way it could compete with a lot of the other ones. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just make it simple. Earth, Mother will give one faith and gold from mice. That's it. There, there aren't other yields. There aren't other things. Right? Ancestor worship, one faith, one culture. That's it. You're not getting two of those and you'll even notice that uh, I've even greatly cut down on the yields for Celtic pantheons. Now, now I feel Celtic pantheons are perfect example of how bad the yield bloat is. Because when you think about it, the Celtic pantheons are part of the unique ability of the Celts. So, so naturally, they need to not only fill the role of pantheons, but they also need to justify the fact that they are part of the unique ability. And it's crazy what kind of things they have. Like, like Bran is a good example. Like right now, I changed it so there's range city combat, more growth, and then culture from growth. Uh, before... Yeah, before you get like culture and gold from like there's just so many yields stacked up because you need to justify that it's strong enough and i feel like whenever you change any whenever you buff anything suddenly these celtic pantheons need a buff as well because they're like well it's a unique ability it's a pantheon and it's inadequate compared to this civ who have their unique ability uh, recently buffed. Now you have to buff all of these. Honestly, keeping it simple, I feel like just make life easier. And this is something I prefer personally. But if, for example, I want to make uh, unique pantheons for a different civilization, now I won't feel like there's a lot of repetitiveness. Because there will be certain things that are no longer being used. That I can use for the other civilization if I want to go that way, right? Because in addition to pantheons or unique ability that does multiple things, it also means that any new pantheon, any new civilization, you have to also add multiple components. But with my mod, I'm hoping that if I do go down any of those routes, 
Now instead of needing to think of a pantheon that does three different things, instead I I break apart one pantheon. It does one thing. Now I have these two other components I can experiment and make new things from. But yeah, so I've made changes to terrain, features, resources, all the pantheons. Both the Celtic and the standard ones, I haven't touched Founder or Follower. I do have an order that I worked down from. And also, all the civilization, all of their unique ability has been changed. Some of them are values changed. Some of them are just... That's all you get. It's a balance that will take time. And that will be something I'll be working to. Uh, the point of this video will be introducing this mod and there will be other introduction videos for other mod mods that I'm gonna build on top of this foundation but otherwise I will have gameplay where I basically play through this, get a feel, balance, tweak things so right now civilization, terrain, resources, uh, pantheons and then for buildings, I've also... So as I said, I, I have an order of doing things. Right now, I'm mostly sticking with Ancient Era stuff. You could get Pantheons in the Ancient Era. You deal with resources and terrain. And you'll probably improve a lot of resources during Ancient Era. And then there are also these uh, buildings where... Not only did I adjust the cost. Because in theory, you should have less production but in addition to that there's also how they impact nearby resources the total yield they have there's definitely like rebalancing when taking into account of the yield reduction and in addition to that i've also changed things like palace gardens royal astrologer these things because they are tied with the ancient era uh, policies. So all of these policies have been changed and for those of you who have played VP before you know a lot of these tradition before is like in addition to uh, Court Astrologer actually no I think yeah it's Court Astrologer does these things and also gives science to these other buildings and then you have like Sovereignty that uh, reduces the culture cost of expansion. And then you have, you get the idea, just a lot of things stacked up. And now it's like, it gives this building, gives you a specialist slot, some yields, and maybe another thing. But otherwise, right, plus two science. Plus two production, some defense, some hit points. A great person, flat faith, that's it, food, right? And then progress also saw a lot of things cut and some of the things nerfed because I feel like it got you out of whack. <laughs> Honestly, tradition and progress, like in the current VP, felt a lot stronger than authority. And Authority also went through some changes. But I do have plans of making a mod mod that will... I won't say drastically, but... It will change how some of the policies will look. Because I'm not happy with... <laughs> authority. At the moment. It's because of... How... Snowbally and how much work you have to put into it, and in the end, it might not even matter. Because things like hunting barbarians, hunting down barbarian camps, uh, wars, taking cities, killing units, all of those aren't that consistent. Like tradition, progress, you can be a lot more consistent on how you do things. Wars, right? If you encounter a dangerous enemy, if you encounter a choke point, which takes you a long time to break through. 
you're gonna steadily fall behind, so... Or my... Yes. Modular mod mod. Um, I'm probably gonna give uh, Authority more of a makeover. You will see a lot of similar components, but overall there will be a lot of changes. And, and that's what I'm gonna do with a, a lot of things. Like while I'm working on the foundation, I'm already brainstorming what I'm gonna do for authority and units. Units is probably a big one. I do want to like introduce more mercenaries and don't make it be only accessible to authority. But that is something I have in the plans. And um, promotion. Promotion is a pretty big one. I don't like the current state of it. And there could be a lot of things that gets cleaned up because right now it's like, hey, look, we have two of the exact or two promotions that's named the same. Everything is the same except that one is uh, granted to Jaguars of the Aztecs and the other is granted to Mohawk of the Iroquois. Why? Why not just give both of them the same one? That, that never made sense to me so there there will be changes and there are also other changes that i don't like like march like march uh, medic one medic two but those are more of my personal preference um, i'm not saying they're wrong i'm right i'm just saying that i don't like it i'm gonna change. <laughs> i can so i will so yeah, my my plan is gonna be simple. Basically, work through the eras. Currently, I've done most of the ancient eras. So I've done policies, um, buildings, terrain, resources, pantheons. Uh, I still need to work on the wonders of the ancient era because if you look at it now, you'll notice that uh, cost is way off. 150 for Stonehenge, but only 35 for Council. I will have to change those. Once I changed um, the Wonder costs, probably also change this if that's possible. Uh, once I change those, Ancient Era should have gone through its first draft of yield reduction, and then I'll be moving on to the Classical Era. Which means uh, unit costs, building yields, wonders, and then once I get to medieval era, then I'll deal with the medieval era policies, uh, buildings, unit costs, wonders, you get the idea. Basically, I'm going through each era bit by bit, and I'll probably play a bit to tweak some numbers where necessary. The, the new eras overall have less things because I've already dealt with uh, Civilization unique abilities, so I shouldn't need to go through that. I may have to do some tweaks, but Depending on how much feedback I get and how much I get to play, which won't be a ton because I'll be modding most of the time uh, those, pro those tweaks probably won't come until quite a bit later and yeah regarding unique buildings unique improvements those will come up whenever i get to the era they're in otherwise i probably won't be looking at them but yeah that's oh yeah sorry i also made changes to specialists so specialists give less yields now and also city state quest and uh, the yields you get from befriending them and allying them. So all of those have been changed. After the wonders here, it's just focus on each era. I do have plans of adding an enlightenment era. Oh yeah, speaking of which, uh, enlightenment era is a very good example of why the yield bloat is really bad. Because you either have the enlightenment era be added in between Renaissance and Industrial, where either its buildings all give a lot of yields, so they're relevant, 
but then you add to the yield bloat, which means that it's possible you have to increase the yields for later buildings because now you don't want them to you don't want to feel like they're weaker than the enlightenment era ones. The alternative is you add them in, they don't give you enough yields, and then they just feel like fillers. Like they don't play a role. I'm hoping that by cutting down yields, I could give the buildings in the Enlightenment era a decent amount where they feel relevant, but they won't be crazy numbers. Honestly, given what I see, like for example, one science for every four citizen. Like some of the biggest culprits are the scaling ones, right? Plus one yield for every X citizen. Uh, for for VP, you'll have some really big cities and those numbers add up a lot. And then once you start adding the percentages plus 10%, plus 20%, was 25% and suddenly you just have so many yields uh, there's that and then there are also uh, something that's very common in policies uh, beliefs and stuff which is and unique abilities which is uh, scaling with error and one of the biggest culprits I found is for example um, Morocco for those of you who have played a lot of Morocco, you'll know that um, in VP it's plus one yield, plus one of all yields uh, in the capital per unique trade route partner scaling with era. So let's, let's use gold as an example. Okay, so um, in ancient era and classical era, you'll get one gold. Uh, medieval you get two, renaissance you get three, industrial you get four, and you know, but but something like uh, trade routes, right? In in industrial era, I don't think it's crazy to think that you could get like six trade routes. So, so basically in your capital, it's, it's not like once you get to industrial era, you'll get, you'll go from one gold to four gold. It's basically saying you'll go from one gold to four gold, but now you have six different trade routes. So four times six is 24. So in a matter of what, um, evil renaissance. You start in ancient era, classical, medieval, renaissance, industrial. So in a time span of four eras, you have increased your yield in the capital through the unique ability by 24 times if you get six. At this moment, I don't know if six is reasonable. I think we could do some quick... So I know that you get one trade route from trade, that's one. Uh, sailing, you get your second one. Then currency, you get your third trade route. Like these are existing trade routes. Uh, compass gives you a fourth one. Then economics give you a fifth one. And I don't know if you get one in. Era. Oh no, yeah you do. So that's six. Six from technology alone, right? Six from technology and then let's see I mean they didn't change this. Yeah, Petra you get uh so now you get onto seven and if you get Colossus now you have eight. I don't think there are any other wonders. But there are policies. You could get one from uh, exchange markets, so that's nine. 
And then I think there's also, yeah, your opener from industry gives you two more. So you could have up to 11. So in the span of four eras, you go from one trade route, one gold, to 11 trade routes, four gold each, so that's 44. So you increase it by 44 times in the span of four eras. Now you have to think, for the other unique abilities, and, and do note that it's one of all yields. So that's 44 science, 44 culture, 44 faith, 44 golden age points, 44 gold, 44 production, 44 food. Now, I, I know this is the best case scenario, but you know, now you have to think. 44 of all of those yields. How strong do the other unique abilities have to be to make it feel like they are on a reasonable footing as Morocco's unique ability? Right, this, this is like ignoring all the other things that you could be doing right. Just from that alone. Right, even... Even if you just have nine, okay, you didn't get those two wonders. Nine, that's still 36. That's still 36 times. 36 of each yield. That's why after starting working on this mod mod, I'm like, this is nuts. How do you balance that? Like, like for Morocco, like, like, yes, you need to find nine different unique trading partners that have city states and all of that. I mean, let's say you could only find six. Okay. Even if you only can find six, that's still 24. That's still 24 of all yields, which is really strong. And chances are you'll probably be able to get more than that. Right. Unless you're somehow warmonger different story and yeah since I started reducing yields and looking into these I'm like wow there there are so many sources of yields especially when ancient era has all those pantheons terrain resources improvement ancient era policies some of the unique abilities like once you stack up that much in the early game, then the later game will start have to in order to keep up. I mean, if anything, and I'm not showing VP, but in some ways, ancient era policies in VP, some of them are argue. One can even argue that they're stronger than medieval era. Well, and how do you deal with that? I mean, one way is cut yields. I know that's not very popular. So does that mean that now you have to buff the medieval ones? And then once you buff the medieval ones, does that mean you have to buff the industrial ones? And once you buff those, does that mean you have to uh, buff the ideologies? You see how... Like, I, I get it. Like, a lot of people enjoy seeing big numbers. But sometimes, if you have too big of numbers, for me personally, I see it limiting your options, limiting what you can do, less diversity because now everything has to do more, which means that if you want every aspect to be unique as possible, which I will try, but I won't go overboard on it, it means that you will get a lot less of each thing. And if you introduce new mechanics, now they have to do these crazy things to keep pace with everything and that's not what I want so yeah I know that was a long winded intro filled with a lot of my complaints filled with some math but overall I just wanted to make this video and 
hopefully after this I'll be able to do a couple of gameplay before I introduce one of my modular mod mods that will give certain things a makeover, introduce new mechanics. We'll see. It, it really depends on how much time I have. But anyways, I am going to end it here. Next time when I come back, hopefully I'll be doing a couple of sessions where I play through the ancient eras. Go go for different parts of the tree and just get a feel of it. I still have wonders to tweak, and once that's done, I think I'm ready to do some testing. So yeah. Anyways, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you have a good one.